Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another exciting genetic engineering and biotechnology news webinar. Our presentation today is entitled Prioritizing the Indications in Your Drug Discovery Portfolio. I'm Jeff Bogoliskis, Technical Editor for GEN, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar presentation. A conundrum exists in the drug discovery field these days, which shows that the number of indications available to drug hunters is growing dramatically. However, the return on investment is declining, leaving many researchers and companies to question why. Traditional approaches for indication prioritization cannot be scaled to screen the increasingly segmented disease landscape systematically, leading investigators to search for novel methodology. For those approaches to be effective, an indication prioritization approach must systematically find the most meaningful candidates across thousands of indications leveraging chemical, biological, clinical, regulatory, and commercial data points. Let's meet our speakers for this GEM webinar who will describe how pharma and biotech companies can explore and prioritize thousands of indications more systematically and cost-effectively by leveraging extensive biological pathway data and advanced bioinformatics combined with development feasibility and commercial metrics. Marina Bissarabova is a Senior Director at Clarivate Analytics, where she leads the Discovery and Translational Science Service Practice. Dr. Bissarabova and her team help life sciences organizations to build and execute bioinformatics, knowledge management, and translational data management strategies. Tez Sang is a Senior Consultant of Portfolio and Licensing at Clarivate Analytics. Dr. Sang's expertise lies within market valuation, competitive landscaping, drug asset, and partner identification. All right, before we get started with the presentations, I want to encourage everyone to submit questions for our Q&A session at the end of the talk. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can, so simply type your question into the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen and hit submit. All right, with all the particulars out of the way, let's get our webinar started. Marina, Tez, the audience is listening. Thank you, Jeffrey. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining. Over the past two decades, the amount of new drug targets has increased significantly due to advances in omics technologies. The human phenotype dimension is also expanding due to increased segmentation of diseases. In addition, as omics technologies and bioinformatics methods continue to advance, Patient populations are being segmented into increasingly narrower patient segments based on meaningfully distinct molecular bases. The complexity of the target and disease dimensions of drug discovery and development presents significant opportunity for pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies. While the expansion of the target and indication segmentation space presents appealing opportunities, it is important to avoid the narrow view of the shot on goal research and development strategy of the 1990s, which according to Clarivate and Deloitte research, drove an increase of research and development spending and a decline in internal investment down from 10.1% in 2010 to 4.8% in 2013, with no end to the decline in 2016. According to 2016 CMR Pharmaceutical Research and Development Factbook, only 9% of investigational drugs reaching first in human dose status survive to market launch. More effective and efficient methods are required to the fact that target disease space, so more meaningful indications can be selected, resulting in more drug candidates likely to survive clinical development and generate meaningful financial returns. The number of indications available to drug hunters is growing dramatically, yet the return on investment is declining. Why is this happening? Traditional approaches to indication prioritization cannot be scaled to screen the increasingly segmented disease landscape in a systematic manner. Novel approaches are therefore required. To be effective, an indication prioritization approach 
must systematically find the most meaningful candidates across thousands of indications, leveraging chemical, biological, clinical, regulatory, and commercial data points. To meet this need, Clarity Analytics has developed a new a unique approach that systematically prioritizes indications at a scale. This fund research and development approach combines extensive evidence with advanced analytics and expertise. The workflow includes two steps. The first step is systematic prioritization of thousands of indications for a target of interest. Here, advanced bioinformatics techniques are combined with extensive molecular network, pathway, biomarker, disease, drug, and drug target data to evaluate association and mechanistic relationships between the target of interest and disease or patient subgroups. The analysis generates a ranking of thousands of indications identifying the top candidates. The second step is expert assessment of top candidates. Here, top candidates from the prioritized list are further assessed by a team of experts. The analysis includes reconstruction of a potential mechanism of action and research and development feasibility and commercial assessment of indications that have been identified. In the next part of the presentation, I will focus on systematic prioritization. Bioinformatics is the application of information technologies to data management and analysis of different types of biological data. Bioinformatics plays an important role in accelerating pharmaceutical research and development by providing effective and efficient solutions to multiple steps of research and development. Since 2010, we have established an industry-recognized top bioinformatics team that is both innovating in bioinformatics techniques and working as a research and development partner with pharmaceutical companies on development of bioinformatics approaches for multiple areas of drug development, including indication prioritization. In our bioinformatics indication prioritization approach, which is systematic and operates at large scale, we apply several complementary techniques and further combine the results using machine learning to generate a prioritized list of over 3,000 indications. In the analysis, we use Clarivate Analytics proprietary data sources and tools. I will describe the data sources and the tools in more detail further in my presentation. As I mentioned, the bioinformatics pipeline combines several complementary techniques. The first approach is molecular network analysis. Molecular network analysis uses an input disease-specific gene for multiple indications and a molecular network. As a source of disease-specific genes, we use manually annotated disease biomarkers for over 3,000 diseases from Integrity, our proprietary investigational drugs database. A molecular network is a snapshot of current knowledge of molecular interactions available to the global scientific community. In our analysis, we use a molecular network of over 1.5 million manually annotated molecular interactions from our proprietary database metabase. The indications are prioritized using network analysis algorithms. These algorithms assess whether a given disease is driven by the target of interest based on topological significance of this target with regard to disease-specific genes in the network. If a target is well connected to disease-specific genes, this target is likely to regulate pathways perturbed in the disease and may thus be highly relevant as a target uh, for the treatment of the indication. In the workflow, we apply four network analysis algorithms, neighborhood scoring, random walk, interconnectivity, and network propagation. These methods are applied in parallel and result 
from the different network analysis methods are combined. The molecular network analysis approach has been published by our team. In the publication, we demonstrated high performance of the approach using information about known drug targets. Um, in our work, we use proprietary implementation of the network analysis algorithms developed within our industry-leading system biology consortium program called CBDD. CBDD, Computational Biology Methods for Drug Discovery, is a pre-competitive program focused on adoption of network analysis methods in drug development. Working together, Navartis, Pfizer, Sanofi, Janssen, Regeneron, UCB, Roche, Tequera, Biogen, Boehringer Ingelheim, Bristol Myers Group, Merck, and Clarivate Analytics accelerate the adoption through thorough review of published systems biology algorithms, implementation of the algorithms, and benchmarking. The second method we apply is molecular pathway analysis approach. Molecular pathway analysis integrates disease-specific genes and molecular pathways to prioritize indications. As a source of disease-specific genes, we use disease biomarkers for over 3,000 diseases from integrity database. A molecular pathway is a combination of molecular interactions that describe a particular biological process, for example, EGFR signaling. In our analysis, we use over 1,500 manually annotated molecular pathways from MetaBase. In analysis, we evaluate an association of molecular pathways that include the target of interest with each given indication using disease biomarkers. The molecular pathway is considered to be associated with a disease if it is enriched in the corresponding disease-specific biomarkers. We then prioritize indications based on this information. The third method we use is disease similarity approach. This method is based on molecular similarities between diseases. Identification of diseases that share molecular bases is a well-recognized strategy for indication selection. Disease similarities can be effectively captured at the molecular level by comparing sets of disease-specific genes. In our analysis, as a source of disease-specific genes, we use disease biomarkers for over 3,000 diseases from integrity. Pairwise molecular similarities of the 3,000 diseases are calculated based on statistical measures of overlap between the disease biomarkers. For a target of interest, indications are prioritized based on the molecular similarity to already known indications of the target. Clarivate Analytics helps Boehringer Ingelheim to establish a pipeline for systematic indication prioritization. The project was recently presented at BIOT conference by Clarivate Analytics and Dr. Elias Tupko from Boehringer Ingelheim. Boehringer Ingelheim's objective was to shift from manual and not systematic indication prioritization to automated and systematic analysis. Using its indication prioritization methods, Clarivate Analytics helped Boehringer Ingelheim's team to develop an analytical pipeline for automated and systematic indication prioritization. The pipeline combined network and pathway information from MetaBase, disease biomarker content from integrity and public sources, omics data, and advanced analytics developed within Clarivate Analytics industry-leading systems biology program, CBDD. Now, indication prioritization in Boehringer Ingelheim is automated and is ranked systematically. It is mandatory for Boehringer Ingelheim's computational biology team to perform systematic indication prioritization once a project reaches start of lead optimization. Following systematic indication prioritization, 
expert assessment of mechanisms of action as well as commercial and research and development feasibility of top candidates is performed. To better understand the resulting predictions and provide a mechanistic view at the target indication relationships, an in-depth analysis of primary publications and the extensive information and integrity and metabase is performed. We examine direct and indirect experimental evidence that supports the algorithm's predictions and determine cellular processes and pathways that link the target to the top predicted indications. The results are described in the form of a report with biological rationale and literature evidence behind the predictions and are summarized in a scheme which explains how the target is linked to predicted indications via cellular processes and pathways it is involved in. The analysis provides a deep mechanistic insight into relationships between the target of interest and the identified indications. Hi, everyone. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to quickly throw out a reminder again to submit questions for our Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Simply type your question into the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen and hit submit. Okay, back to you, Marina. Thanks, Marina. My name is Ted Sang, and I'll be taking you through the commercial assessment section of our indication prioritization. Clarivate Analytics' approach to indication prioritization is performed through our in-house developed methodologies that make up our commercial assessments. Commercial assessments, or market evaluations, are reports that enable us to determine the, co the commercial attractiveness of a disease market. Therefore, we use standardized metrics in order to perform comparative analyses between target indication markets. As Marina has alluded to earlier, the majority of the information that determines the commercial attractiveness is derived from our own proprietary databases. The majority of data content derives from Cortellus, Integrity, Web of Science, and our IPD epidemiology databases. Where possible, we also supplement this with information from publicly available sources. There will be some flexibility with the factors that contribute to the commercial assessments. Often we perform analyses to determine to understand the regulatory barriers to a market, but for the purpose of describing the approach in this presentation, we'll focus on the disease landscape, the market size, the development landscape, and the competitive landscape. The consulting team brings together some background information surrounding the disease itself, looking through up-to-date scientific literature to provide the latest developments. This information is to provide a general introduction to the disease and does not provide any metrics to differentiate the commercial attractiveness of the diseases. The market size can be divided into patient population size and financial market size. In terms of the size of the patient population, we extract epidemiology figures from within our incidence and prevalence database, which is supplemented with additional data from publicly available sources such as, for example, the WHO and Disease Society websites. Epidemiology statistics are presented using comparable metrics, such as incidence per 100,000 population. We also provide additional insights on patient subgroups, the population dynamics, for example, changes in patient numbers due to improved diagnostics. The financial market size is a dollar amount spent on pharmaceutical treatments for that disease. Values may represent reported sales for previous fiscal years or will be forecasted sales. Growth projections or declines in sales, given as compound annual growth rates, will be representative of the overall market dynamics. Direct and indirect costs of patient treatment can also be provided as a measure of financial burden attributed by the disease. The first component of the development landscape is the availability of preclinical models, which is a measure of preclinical feasibility. The availability of, well es of established and well-characterized analogs that closely mimic the disease may be considered gold standards for the life sciences industry would be preferable. 
Many diseases have been calling for better in vivo models of disease, whereas other have gold standard models already in place. For example, the, the superoxide dismutase model for motor neuron disease has reportedly shown to have similar proportion of success to drugs as patients using the same investigational treatments. Biomarker data corresponding to the target, uh, the target indication is extrapolated from Clarivate Analytics Integrity, which will come with classifications corresponding to their maturity and utility. Biomarkers can derive from a range of investigational studies, such as early experimental animal models, to those identified from late-stage clinical studies. The presence of readily available biological markers to closely predict disease efficacy would be seen as, a, as a, an advantage. An analysis of typical clinical trials can be, de, can, can be conducted to provide a measure of the burden required to undergo clinical development. Often our analyses are performed to determine the, the timeline to achieve clinical proof of concept for an indication along with attrition rates. An understanding of the resource investment required to achieve clinical proof of concept in target disease areas is an important consideration in indication selection. By analyzing data within Cortellus for, by analyzing data within Cortellus for clinical trials intelligence, Clarivate Analytics teams present an outline of other factors such as typical patient enrollment counts, patient enrollment rates, study uh, treatment durations, study timelines uh, for, these, for the disease areas of interest. In order to understand the competitive intensity of the current market, we determine the current standards of care and the available treatments for the disease. Additional insight is provided as to how the standards of care, which also include any off-label prescribing, is able to address the medical needs of the patient population. The extent of unmet need, unmet medical need, is derived from Clarivate Analytics Consultants' insight and opinion on the overall landscape of the target market based on the evidence obtained from Cortellus for Competitive Intelligence Publications and articles are gathered and analyzed in order to identify other unmet medical needs and support the findings of peer review literature. Also, press releases, interviews, patient groups' websites are consulted um, to, to supplement the information divide, provided. The areas of unmet medical need also presents, represents the opportunity within the disease market. The assessment of the development pipelines to determine the competitive intensity of the future market. We characterize the volume of assets in development as well as the strength of the pipeline and its maturity. Clarivate Analytics assess the overall development landscape and identify potential rising stars to treat the disease with a particular focus on the mechanism of action. More importantly, we assess the mechanisms of action for their ability to address the unmet medical needs. More often than not, there will be a mechanism of action of interest. Clarivate Analytics consultants perform scientific due diligence through a review of the literature in order to, in order to verify the rationale between the target and disease. The next two slides summarize the data elements that contribute to a commercial assessment. It should be reiterated that assessments do show some flexibility with regards to the data elements to include and at what weighting to score them. In addition, there will be varying depths to, uh, to the amount of analysis within each data element. For example, expert opinion can be gained to support secondary data. Finally, we can demonstrate the cross-indication commercial assessments which, which are presented as a traffic light scoring system chart to enable identification of indications that are more commercially attractive. The second chart to the right represents the data that underlies this scoring system. While the complexity of the target and disease dimensions of drug discovery and development presents a significant opportunity for pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies, the return on investment continues to decline. One reason is the lack of scalability when it comes to the traditional approaches to indication prioritization. 
more systematic and cost-efficient methods are required so that more meaningful indications can be selected, resulting in more drug candidates likely to survive clinical development and generate meaningful financial returns. To address this need, Clarivate Analytics developed a novel approach that systematically prioritizes indications of skill. The approach combines extensive evidence as well as advanced analytics and expertise to select the most meaningful indications among thousands of candidates. With this method, pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies looking to evaluate compounds and targets across their portfolio can explore and prioritize thousands of indications in a systematic and more cost-effective manner. You can learn more about our indication prioritization approach from our publications that are available at Clarivate Analytics website. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Marina and Tez. That was an excellent presentation. Our audience should now have a much greater sense of the value of indication prioritization and how Clarivate Analytics technology can help streamline even the most intricate drug discovery workflows. Before we start the Q&A session, I want to remind everyone that this is their final chance to submit your questions for our speakers. So hurry up and send them in now. All right, let's begin the Q&A. I see we have a bunch of questions that have already started to roll in, so let's get to it. Uh, just give us a few moments on our side to get everything straightened out logistically, and we'll begin the Q&A. All right, guys, so let's get to the questions. Marina, the first question uh, is for you. Uh, one of our audience members would like to know, how long does a typical indication prioritization project run? Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so it depends on uh, the scope of the project. So as we described, the whole analysis includes multiple steps um, and the, the amount of time we would spend uh, doing the project, doing the analysis would depend on how many steps we include in the analysis as well as how many data sources um, we consider at each step of the analysis. Uh, it really um, it varies from um, two weeks to about uh, three months. All right. Thank you, Rita. And stay with me. We have another question for you. Uh, one of our audience members would like to know, how long does the um, systematic prioritization assessment take? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, this is about uh, from two weeks to uh, one month per uh, target. Okay, great. And Tez, the next question is for you. Um, how long would you need to conduct one of these assessments? Um, yeah, well, that, um, that really depends. As I've previously mentioned, there's a lot of flexibility with uh, uh, the level of um, uh, detail that we can go into for these commercial assessments. But um, um, <clears throat> so, so with a, a wide number, of, with a, a greater number of commercial assessments, say, um, anything up to 20 or 30 indications at the same time, then um, typically we can uh, produce these commercial assessments with real-time data um, at around, say, three to four days per, per indication. All right. Thank you, Tez. And we have a, another question for you. Um, can the commercial assessments be carried out for rare diseases or obscure diseases? Um, yeah, that's, that's actually a good, good question. So the commercial assessments for rare diseases will be conducted in, uh, in, in much of the same way as any other indication. Uh, usually diseases associated with orphan drug classifications will be, will be quite well defined, meaning that our commercial assessments will have plenty of data uh, associated with them. Uh, but also we can do, look at more obscure diseases. Uh, we've performed many of these from anything from uh, pruritus to uh, specified sub subpopulations of disease. To, uh, to diseases where there's no therapy on the market um, and uh, where the standards of care are not, are not drug related. Uh, so we don't have to focus on, on major uh, established indications. All right, thank you, Tess. Uh, I think this next question may be for um, both of you guys. So maybe Marina, if you want to 
uh, tackle this first. Um, can you customize the analysis, uh, include new data types or data provided by companies you work for? Um, yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, it's uh, customizable. Um, it's customizable uh, in terms of uh, what kind of data types on the Clarivate side we would use. Um, so, for example, we could take into account only network content, or we could take into account pathway information, uh, or we combine all of that. So it's customizable based on that. Uh, we also can include uh, public data, um, and um, in our example with the Voidinger Ingelheim that we presented, uh, we've done exactly that. Uh, so we integrated some of the public biomarker data, uh, some public um, gene expression data uh, in the analysis. Also, we can definitely integrate some pathway network um, content, some, some, pub, some public network and uh, pathway content. That's uh, also possible. Uh, what's also possible, we can include some client data, right? Um, so, for example, if um, our client has um, some um, target-specific uh, data or treatment-specific data, uh, some uh, data for indications they would like us to take into account that could be, again, at pathway level, molecular interaction level, gene expression level, that um, also can be um, integrated. So it's highly customizable uh, pipeline, uh, and every time we start a project, uh, we discuss all possible options with um, our clients. Uh, and uh, we find the right um, approach for the uh, certain project and for the certain client. So that would be for uh, the uh, bioinformatics part of the pipeline, and uh, I'll let Taz comment on the commercial uh, part of the pipeline. Yeah, thanks, Marina. Um, I think it's very much uh, a similar answer to, uh, to Marina's in that um, uh, we can actually receive um, uh, maybe put uh, some clinical data with regards to the, the asset involved with um, uh, examining it for these target indications. And, and we try to uh, look at um, how we would position the asset within the, in the particular market uh, and therefore be able to provide, provide some comparative analysis into uh, uh, what would be the, um, uh, the most com commercially viable market as uh, determined by the, um, uh, those, those clinical results. All righty, thank you guys. Um, Marina, question for you. Um, based on the work that you presented today, can you use the same approach for drug target identification? Um, yes, actually. Um, and actually, originally, the bioinformatics pipeline uh, was developed specifically for that. It was developed for identification of drug targets using uh, network an analysis and pathway analysis. And um, this work is actually published, uh, and uh, this uh, publication um, is um, uh, it's AMIC uh, et al. Uh, 2013 in plus. Um, so that, that publication uh, is available uh, online, uh, and uh, the pipeline uses exactly the same principle. So it is uh, linking uh, potential targets with uh, potential indications through uh, molecular interactions and pathways and prioritizing the best pairs. Um, so we, we use uh, the, same, the same pipeline uh, for our clients when the objective is to identify potential um, targets, uh, new targets uh, for an indication of interest, or uh, do repositioning with the focus around our certain indication. All right, thank you. And uh, the next question is for you as well, and you may have answered some of this already, um, so, so if you have, I apologize, but the, one of the, the questions I want to know is uh, what are the format of, of the deliverables for such a project? Um, so again, as I mentioned, um, this is quite a flexible type of project, um, and uh, the deliverable, uh, deliverable, deliverable format uh, varies. 
Uh, it could be just a report where we would provide prioritized list of indications, a description of methodology. Um, it would be also a um, description of our commercial assessment, uh, commercial analysis, analysis of R&D factors, and some results of uh, so there uh, downstream prioritization from bioinformatics analysis as well as um, the mechanism of action explanation. So it would be in a format of a um, report. Uh, it also could be in interactive format. Uh, so for several of the clients, we actually developed a dashboard. Uh, and uh, the dashboard shows uh, a little bit more information that is possible to provide in the report because it's interactive. Uh, so it provides different um, ways of filtering the information, uh, provides uh, opportunity to do visualization of uh, pathways, uh, biomarkers, uh, molecule interactions uh, that are the most important, right, for uh, linking certain indication uh, with the uh, target of interest. Um, it also provides an opportunity to filter using uh, several commercial factors. Uh, in our disability factors, uh, so that also could be done, so that interactive um, report. Uh, and with several clients, we actually worked on uh, developing analytical pipeline within the organizations, right? So what that allows them to do is actually to do the whole thing, the whole analysis on their end, right, primarily by bioinformatics part of it, uh, so like what we've done with uh, Boehringer Ingerheim. So it's um, these three really different uh, levels, right? Uh, report, uh, static report, interactive report, and analytical pipeline. All right, thank you very much, Marina. Uh, Tez, we have a question for you. Uh, one of our audience members would like to know, what is the workflow for the project? Um, how much of the commercial assessment is automated with the availability of a portfolio tool, or is it mainly assessed with your team of experts? Um, with the uh, building of the report for the commercial assessments, um, at this particular stage, not um, any of this information gathering is done by, by any automation. So it does require some manual effort, um, but the, the manual effort is um, you know, mainly scavenging information from our own proprietary databases, but also uh, uh, other, other publicly available sources. But um, the uh, this information, the, the extraction of this information ensures that it's, it's certainly up to date. Uh, and then there, there is a lot of uh, qualitative uh, interpretation of the data. Um, so, so therefore, this, this would mean that uh, we would, wouldn't be able to um, uh, perform this, uh, the, the pathway, the workflow in, in an automated manner. Uh, so, for example, um, you know, trying to uh, identify the unmet medical needs, uh, and also uh, looking at things such as uh, the mechanisms of action and the rising stars. This, this very much is a is a uh, collation of um, you know what evidence is there, uh, and also um, you know our, our expert opinion. All right, thanks, Jez. Uh, Rena, we have a question for you. Um, audience member would like to know, is the publication by Ivlev et al. from 2017 available from Clarivate? Our, so we have a publication uh, from um, 2013 for the uh, actual bioinformatics pipeline. So this is um, AMIC et al. So this is where the uh, majority of the uh, um, uh, technology is explained. So that really would be the key um, publication for this uh, pipeline. All right, thank you. And with that, it looks like we've come to the end of our webinar. I want to remind everyone that the webinar will be on our site at www.genengnews.com uh, for up to a year. So if you missed it uh, or want to rewatch parts of it again or want to forward the link to your friends and colleagues, which we always recommend, you can do that there. Uh, I'd like to thank Marina and Tez again for their informative presentations, and I'd like to thank the audience for their attention and very thoughtful questions. And a very special thanks to Clarivate Analytics for sponsoring this webinar. So hopefully we'll see you again in another GenWebinar in the near future. Goodbye for now.